This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of McCormick versus Holmes. You all have been dating for three years, is that right? Yes. Uh, you're living together and have one child together, correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. And Ms. McCormick, you brought your boyfriend here to court today. Why? Well, Your Honor, me and Jared, we've been together for three and a half years, and I'm just here because we have a baby together and everything, and I'm just tired of hearing stuff. I'm tired of everybody saying he cheating on me, and I'm just... I'm just tired. It's just too much for me, Jared. I'm, I'm, I'm not a cheater, though. I'm here for one thing, to prove to you that this is this love is real. Well, Ms. McCormick, if you find out that he's cheating, I mean, then what? And we ain't gonna be together. I told him already that I didn't want to um, deal with this again. I'm, t I'm just too old. We didn't have a baby together. And I told him I just wanted to settle down. We supposed to be getting married and everything. I think she's just a little insecure, me personally. Who are these people talking to you about your relationship with him? Family members, friends. And they all believe that he's cheating? Yes. Did your friends like Mr. Holmes in yes. the beginning? Yes. At first, it was cool. Until he started telling him and hearing about what he been doing and stuff like that, and then they telling me, and then they don't like him no more. But they hearing it. They haven't seen it. Okay, tell me about the beginning. Uh, we was at a park. We met at a park. We, um... My son, my son was playing hide and seek with me. Well, he was playing too rough, hide and seek, and I couldn't find him. And, I, and that's how I ran into her, looking for him. So you that's know, a different twist. You know, you've heard about the damsel in distress. This is the gentleman in distress. And the yeah. damsel came and she saved Comes to his rescue. Okay, so when you saw him, this gentleman in distress, yes. did you have your eye on him? You yeah. can tell me. Yes, uh -huh. I was. And so you just stepped up to the plate like, he needs me. Yeah. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> so, besides helping you locate your child in the park, what was it about her that you liked? Look at her. She, you know, she, she got a, she's got an attractive body, you know, good personality. She take care of the home like my mom did with me, you know, and my grandmother. So, you know, it's kind of like, it's just like a familiar, you know, bond. Most men want a woman that's not just like your mom, but similar, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, you know yeah, I, mean? I, I think I do know that. Sim uh, similar. Similarities, you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay, well, here's the thing. It has been said I'm like my mother-in-law, and I adored my mother-in-law. She was the bomb, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. So, when people say I'm like my mother-in-law, I'm very good with that, because I thought she was all that... That's right. ...and a bag of chips. So, <laughs> if you like his mother, that, to me, is the ultimate yeah. compliment. And, and so, you, wait a minute, she was blushing the whole time. That's what was tickling me. All right, so when our sons come home with somebody who's like, they're just like mom, that's a compliment, right? It is a compliment. I'm scared for her. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm scared for them. Uh, yeah, but... what? <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's a good thing. I get that. So we have your soulmate standing here with you, and you are now accusing him of cheating. When, we, when I posted him on my Facebook... Oh, my goodness. Okay, so six months we into the relationship. You know, you know, when you post your boo on Facebook, you know it's good. It's official. Yeah. So... Because you put it out there for the whole world. Yeah. All right. Your Honor, when I posted that, man, them people got in my inbox. People got in my inbox like... Haters. That's your... That's your boyfriend? How long y'all been going together? Girl, you gotta watch him. He be cheating and stuff and doing this and doing that. So, you know, I ain't lies. gonna lie, Your Honor. I, I just brushed it off like it wasn't nothing. Because, you know, I really in love with him. You know, I'm thinking, like, oh, they hating on me or whatever, and he in my ear Okay, wait about... a minute. How many people... One person said this? No, I ain't gonna lie. It was, like, three people in my inbox. Mr. Holmes, you got this reputation of being a cheater. I ain't... But, see, that's and the thing. he swear I'm not cheating with people. Some him. of these women... Some of them, like, be... Fr some, like, sometimes women, like, need um, somebody to talk to. But you shouldn't but be now... talking to no other women but me. I ain't... But see, that's the point. That's what they got a man for. Yeah, they got a man, but all of them don't have a man that's well, doing right by them. Well, they need to find I'm not <laughs> intimate with them. Ms. McCormick, do you have any specific reasons why you think he's cheating? Man, it was a couple of months, a year ago, a woman answered his phone. Okay, so you call his phone and a woman that. answers the phone. Yes. And what happened? What did you say to her? I'm, I, I ain't even gonna lie, Your Honor. I looked at the phone. You know how you... I'm... He, she like, hello? I looked at the phone like, who is this? I said, hello? 
And, you know, she she hung it up. Like, he probably took the phone from her or whatever. So, I ain't gonna lie. I'm calling, calling, calling. I'm just calling, calling, calling. Did another woman answer your phone? I, I lost the phone at the grocery store. Let this me is, tell this you is what the happened. lost phone at the grocery store store. Let me okay. tell you what All happened. Right. All right. See, Go I ahead. was talking to the clerk at the store, and I set the phone down on the thing, but I had forgot something that I wanted, so I ran to get that. And I, you really gonna play haste, me like that? I left my phone. Man, hold on. I left my phone. So, whoever answered the phone, when I went back to the store a few hours later to get my phone, it was a woman that gave it to me. So, I don't know what she... who She said somebody called, but I don't know what she said. So, when you saw the phone, did you see that your girlfriend had called you? Yeah. Did you call her back? Yeah. Okay, what did you say to him when he finally called you back? Who is that girl that answered that phone? Yeah, I, I don't know. And what did he tell you? I don't know what you mean. You must have called somebody else before you called me or thought you called me or something. Like, come on, man. It, the, I know my did phone he, said... Did he ever tell you he lost the phone at the store? No. This is the first time you hear that? I him. told her. Yes. I told her that. My question is, do you have anything else that makes you believe he's cheating? This is so embarrassing. I'm cleaning up. I'm sweeping under my bed. I look under my bed. Leona, I seen some panties under my bed. <laughs> okay, so you found panties under your bed and they... Some pink panties, Your Honor. Some pink panties. Your Honor. Some small pink panties at that. I'm a big girl, Your Honor. I can't Look. fit these. What am I gonna do with these? Put them on a doll? I, I, I mean... can, uh, let the record reflect that those panties would not fit the plaintiff. No, these ain't that. <laughs> Well, so, okay, well, it, wait, wait, wait. It, she finds panties under her bed that don't belong to her. I they don't fit. And they him. don't fit. And if the panties don't fit... Well, you gotta convict. <laughs> you gotta convict. Man. Yeah. Yes, let me tell you this, this is, one. No, Your Honor, I ain't gonna this, lie. This is crazy. Mr. Holmes, okay. I got, all right, now, first okay, of all... Okay, first of all, okay. Let me, wait a minute, wait, hold on. Let wait, me wait, give wait, myself wait, position Holmes. for this right. story. Hold on, hold I on. I wanna see... How... Hold those panties up again, Mr. Yeah, hold them up. I want to see how you're going to explain yeah, how those I mean, panties I don't even know where them came... I ain't never seen them before. First oh, of all, <laughs> listen, though. Man all to man, right, right. if I was... Do you think I'd be crazy enough to put to bring a woman to my house and leave some evidence? Mr. Believe me, if I had intentions of doing that, I'm gonna be more thorough. We you're the same kids. person who left their phone at the grocery store. Them you're them saying you sure. wouldn't attempt, you wouldn't uh, mistakenly man, I'm kidding. leave yeah, panties. I got, I got three kids. My kids gonna tell on me. Mr. Okay, Holmes. wait a minute, wait a minute. She's gonna wriggle into those panties easier than you're gonna wriggle like out of them. These is not excuses. These are probable. These is plausible reasons why they were there. They're not plausible. They're reasons, but why. they're not plausible. I don't know why they were there. I have a plausible reason how they could have gotten there. What's, What's that? that, Mr. Cutler? You were sleeping with somebody yes. who's not your girlfriend. In no. your house. No. That's, that's, plausible. that's, that's plausible. a plausible reason. She make up stuff to trap me. Okay, she, that's the third one. So okay, we she got, got... She got y'all on her side right now, but we'll yeah, see when these results are no, 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 no. It's she doesn't true. have us on her side. The facts. But yes. the facts still remain. Facts don't see, lie. People can plant evidence. Do you have any other reason to believe that Mr. Holmes is cheating? Yes. Three weeks ago, he had took the key, my keys to my car and, and um, had it on his key thing. And I went to... I was calling him, calling him, calling him to see if he could drop the keys back off. He wasn't answering like he always do when he gone. So I got tired of calling. I just went down there. I know where he work at. I'm asking, like, where is Jerry? Why? Where is he at? I'm seeing everybody he work <laughs> with, and I'm not seeing him. And I know he... You know, he at work. He supposed to be at work. So what did that... they say when you asked about him? Oh, I'm not in that. Okay, well, so... I, I'm not in that. Yeah, like what you ain't in. Yeah, exactly. What did you What did you interpret that to mean? Like he was doing something he ain't got no business. It's like so... your friends is telling on you. I was sent to get some supplies from a store. So when she came, she wasn't even supposed to be popping up. If she wasn't playing detective, she would have known that. See, and the people that. I work no. with. They ain't gonna, they that's like not their business even know to get involved was... in that. If you're out running a legitimate errand, people on the job are gonna say he's out running an errand, or I don't know where he went. Yeah, well, maybe why they, is they should. They they're... should, but she can see she it's only talked to one person. There are lots. Person. Of, there are lots of ways to answer that question other than I ain't in that mess. Because that means one, well, you... you out doing something you're not supposed to do, not necessarily. and two, they know it. Okay, he said you only talked to one person. How many people did you talk and to? And I talked to 
four people that he was with. Nobody act like they didn't know where he was at. So that made you think that they were trying to give him a yes. heads up. Yes, he was. They knew something. he was somewhere he wasn't yes. supposed to. They knew where he was at. I just didn't know where he was at. <sighs> it's a lot. To help get to the bottom of this, the court has retained the services of a former military interrogator, Miss Lena Sisko. Ron, please escort Miss Sisko into the courtroom. Yes, y'all. Francisco, could you please state for the court record your credentials? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former military interrogator uh, certified by the Department of Defense, and I have interrogated members of al-Qaeda and Taliban at Gitmo shortly after 9-11. Since that time, I have been training law enforcement personnel, private sector personnel, and Department of Defense personnel in interrogation methods and enhanced interviewing techniques. Can you tell us what you did to investigate this case? I can, Your Honor. I first had the accused write a witness statement, and I analyzed it for any indicators of deception. Okay. I studied his case file, and then I came up with an interrogation plan, and then I interrogated the accused to see if, indeed, he was cheating or not. What were your initial findings? So my initial findings were that he was very open with his body language, he was very forthcoming, and he gave me plausible, detailed answers to his accusations. Did you find anything concerning? I did. The first two concerning things I discovered were two common indicators of verbal deception. So he told me he was actually committed to the relationship, and that word actually means that he's comparing what he's saying to another thought. So that thought may be that he may not be actually committed or something, but it's just a comparison. He also said that he was striving to be a good partner. So it just tells me in his mind he's still working working towards being a good partner. And then my biggest concern was that while I was interrogating him, he fell asleep. <laughs> okay, so what does that look like? Somebody just, I mean, did he just go to sleep sitting up? Yes, he did, Your Honor. So he was, he was sitting and we had been about 20 minutes into the interrogation and right as he was giving me an answer, he fell asleep. So what that indicates to me is when people <laughs> lie or they're not forthcoming, they get so incredibly stressed out that it be they become exhausted and they will just start to fall asleep. I've had a lot of detainees fall asleep on me in interrogations at Gitmo. That is so bizarrely interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Holmes, were you stressed out? No, nah, I was tired, man. <laughs> All right, Ms. McCormick, you have listened to Ms. Sisko's testimony. Yes. What is going through your mind? I just can't believe him. To further investigate these cheating allegations, the court also ordered Mr. Holmes to undergo a polygraph examination, and we have those results. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Kendall Shaw into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. Thank you. It's good to see you, sir. Hey, good to see you, too. Mr. Holmes underwent a polygraph examination, correct? That's correct. Right. He was asked, did the pink panties Ms. McCormick found under the bed belong to a woman you had physical sexual contact with? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. That's only one. You asked Mr. Holmes, were you having physical sexual contact with another woman the day Miss McCormick showed up at your job? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Your Honor. I told you. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Holmes, you are pleased with the results that you're hearing? Well, yeah, so far. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Holmes was asked, during your three-year relationship, have you ever had physical sexual contact with anyone other than Ms. McCormick? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. Ah. Uh... 
See, that's what I'm saying. Deceptive. Uh, Mr. I'm... Holmes, we've got two experts who've examined you and have determined that you were being deceptive. So now's the time to come clean. I had a, a, another woman that was accusing me of having a baby buyer or whatever, and she attempted to give me oral sex or something, but it didn't go down like that. And that's, that's probably what... That's the only thing I could think of that would have been... Why you ain't been told me this? Okay, wait a minute. How does one attempt to give oral sex? She attempted because... She attempted, but it got... But it, uh, unfortunately, some... It didn't happen like that. <laughs> Mr. Shaw, did you find anything else in your investigation? Your Honor, he did admit to me that she did perform oral sex on him, but oh. he, wasn't, oh. he wasn't exactly able to perform, but she did perform oral sex on him. Well, that's a little different than the one you just told us. It was a one-time incident, and it ain't gonna happen again. All right. You've got your answers. Are you going to stay in this relationship, or are you done? I'm done. You all have been together 11 years, you're married. You have two, count them, two sets of twins together. And you are worried and this marriage is on the rocks because you believe he's with another woman half your age. Miss Butterfield, tell us why you brought this case and what's at stake. Your Honor, I'm here today to prove that he is cheating in my house. And when I find out he's cheating in my house, I'm gonna blow the roof off this courtroom. <laughs> Okay, in your house. Not in, in your house, house, but in your house. In my house. But, Mr. Williams, I gotta think that these allegations of, that are being thrown at you have got to bother you. Tell me how you're feeling about this. Well, I feel uncomfortable. You know, I, I always be on the road a lot, and when I'm coming home and stuff, it's like... Stop lying. Always, excuse me? I get yelled at and, well, what you doing now and all this stuff here, and, and this is like, it's uncomfortable. And I'm like, I'm just trying... I'm here to just pretty much get down to the bottom of it. Like, really, I'm just sick of it. All right, What so about me? What about how I feel? Then that's what I was getting ready to ask you, Ms. Butterfield. How are you feeling in this situation? I'm feeling hurt because it's like I took people in to help them out. I've been with him. I married him. I want to be with him. And it really hurts to know that he's sleeping around with somebody in my house. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say, that would not uh, pass the test in the Cutler home. That would not be the... <laughs> that would not be going on. I couldn't live with that. So, in order to see how we got here, I need to understand how we got here. So, tell me how you all met and how you got started. Well, I met him on the dating website. Okay. And he inboxed me about 10 times. Really? <laughs> Come on now. We used to go out, spend time together, and... It was like, after my first set of twins were born, everything, he was the one. He was everything. So, after you had been together and started your family, it was like, okay, this is the one for me. Yes. All right. So, what was it about her that you liked? Her personality. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was charming. She pretty much, you know, made me feel that this is the one that I want to be with, mm -hmm. that I want to spend my life with. And... That's how it pretty much clicked. It's like one, two, three, everything is clicked and we was on. So you knew that you had found the woman of your dreams. Right. So, Miss Butterfield, I gotta know. I gotta know. How did he propose to you? What did that look like? I proposed to him. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. what I'm talking about. Well, yeah. well, 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 yeah. well. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, she proposed what to me. What you talking yeah. about, Mr. Cutler? I'm yeah, talking the about the script. Yeah. You know, I'm all for men proposing to women, but every once in a while, it's good to hear a woman take that first step and say, "You know what? I want him so much. I'm going to st step up. I'm going to ask." Him. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay for a woman to do that. All right. Hmm. So, Ms. Butterfield, what did you do, and how did you do it? Well, I planned a big party. And I ordered the rings offline. I had his family there and my family there. Okay. Then I got down on one knee and I asked him to marry me. In front and I of all the family? Say yes, because if he didn't, I was going to beat his ass. Oh, oh really? Uh, so I you did this in front one. of all the way, all your family, both sets of family, you proposed to him? Yes. So you had to know he was going to say yes, because that's really being out there. Yes, Your Honor. I'm a, I'm a family man. You know, at the time, okay. you know, we already had kids together, you know, trying to start a family. So the right thing to do is go ahead and close the, 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 the next chapter and move on as a family. 
All right. This sounds so sweet, and it's unique that you asked yeah. him, and you sound like you all found each other's soulmate. What were the warning signs that you've seen that he's cheating? Because, Your Honor, we was walking down to our room, and I heard his phone go off. And I knew it was a notification ringtone. So, when he left, I went through his phone. And I seen the same dating app on their day when we met. Oh. Mr. Uh, Williams, so uh, the dating app that you found the love of your life on, you still had open, you still had active, and you were receiving notifications on it. Hmm. How do you explain that? I'm playing around. You know, we men do stupid stuff and don't think. Hey, you hey, know, hey, man. hey, don't bring all of us into this. <laughs> You well, did stupid stuff. I do stuff. stupid stuff and don't think and not realizing what type of person I have already in my life. We sat down, talked about it. I admitted to it. I was wrong. I shouldn't have, it shouldn't have happened. And we moved on from there. And you were done with looking at other women? Yes. Right? Right. Right? Right. Okay. Ms. Butterfield, right? No. Excuse no. me? Okay. Really? Why wasn't that the end of it? I did. I don't think I posted Five through. months ago. What do you mean? Five months ago. I had months? a family friend move in. Oh, wow. <laughs> and his eyes get... Every time I look at him, he's looking at her. So you thinking he's looking at her wishing something was going on? Yes. Do you think something actually is going on? Yes, I do. Sp specifically share with the court why you think he's cheating with this particular woman. Because I went to his truck because my daughter's shoes was in the truck. So I'm looking in the back seat for the shoes. I reach my hand under his seat, I feel a wrapper. And so I pull the wrapper out. It's condoms. Oh, oh boy. And I'm like, what are you doing with condoms? So I took a picture. Oh. And you submitted that picture to the court? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Oh. And then that, that's a three-pack. Where's the other one at? Oh. I don't think so. All right, yeah, why no, you got true. condoms Whatever. in the car? I don't even know what brand it is. You sure she ain't playing them now? Why, Why would she, she do that? Them? I don't know. She accused me of everything else. She might do that, too. And that's your story? Yeah. All right. Then, Your Honor... Well, Ms. Butterfield, you know, have you found anything that makes you think that he's cheating with this younger woman? Yes, I did. I'm going through my laundry basket to find my pants. And then when I look in his, I found her panties in his laundry basket. Oh! Uh... Like, and what his are her doing in our room? Yes. Well, how do you know they were hers? I know they're hers because she wears panties too tight for her. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> All right. No. Well. All now, right. You see, Your Honor, these are mine. They're nice and clean, well adjusted. These are hers. She ripped them because they're too tight for her. <laughs> <laughs> And you trying to figure out why are your underwear in my husband's hamper? Exactly. Because she don't he... come in our room, so why, why is her stuff in our room? Mr. Williams, here we are right here in this moment right now. What's your explanation as to why these panties are in your hamper in your basket? Because you have sex with her. Excuse No. I don't do stuff like that. I'm a grown man and a family man, and I don't do stuff like that. Sorry, you got the wrong one, sister. Yeah, okay. I don't know how they got in the hamper. I can't tell. I didn't put them there. Ms. Butterfield, so... where is this hamper that you found it? Is it in your bedroom? Yes, it is. Okay, and does this woman who's half your age, who's living with you, this family friend, does she sleep in your bedroom? No, she does not. Does she have any clothes in your bedroom? No, she does not. Okay, so Mr. Williams, she doesn't sleep in the bedroom. She doesn't have any clothes in the bedroom. She doesn't stay in the bedroom. Why in the world, how in the world did her panties get in the hamper or the basket that's in your bedroom? I have the clues, clues, clues found out because I didn't put them there. Mr. Williams, have you slept with this woman? No, ma'am. You yes, have you did. not, your testimony is you have not slept with this younger woman, the woman that's half your wife's age. No, I don't do stuff like that. I'm a grown man. All right, so there's your wife's side, there's the husband's side, and there's the woman who's living in the house side. She is here. Would you, you please the... oh, escort yeah. Ms. Yeah. Hunt in? Oh, yeah. Ms. Hunt? Look at this homework and trap. You doing too much. You doing too much. You doing too much. You doing too much. Maybe if you want to be dressed like that, we're no longer going to be dressed like that. Ain't no hope. Ain't no hope. 
never, ain't never no help. Ain't never no help. Ladies, ma'am, ma'am. 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 ma'am, you're in a courtroom. Step Thank up you. here. To step up here and have a Ms. seat. Ms. Butterfield, it's still a courtroom. You will govern yourself accordingly, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Would you state your name, please, for the court? Miss Kennedy Hunt. Miss Hunt, you've been listening to the testimony. Yes, I have. How did you come to live in their home? Well, Your Honor, I've moved down here recently, actually. I've only been living with them for about maybe six months, and I was with the wrong people. So she took me in. I knew she was living in the same area I was. So she took me in to get me on my feet. And I'm very grateful for that. I would never Obviously do anything. Not. So she... I would never do anything to stab her in the back. She knows that. So Ms. I Butterfield help her, is I help a friend to you. Yes. She's a family friend to me. And I've always had her back. <laughs> you understand. Yeah, his back, too. Mi- Miss... Okay, Miss no, Butterfield. she didn't. <laughs> so, Miss Hunt... You understand that Miss Butterfield believes that you're sleeping with her husband. I don't know why. Okay, but she found your panties in her husband's laundry. Can you explain to the court how that happened? First of all, yes, I can. Okay. I do laundry for the whole house. Maybe if you weren't so lazy and cleaned up, I would... You could do your own laundry, but I'm nice enough to do everybody's laundry in the house. Everybody's laundry gets mixed up. It's a coincidence. Why have you not said anything to my face like a woman like you should have? But now it's coming out, but you didn't say nothing before. You should have came to me like a woman. If you... If I have that respect for you, you should have respect for me. Why you sit there and y'all stare Lord, eye to eye? I don't stare Why eye. y'all stare eye to eye? Lord... He's sitting help. on the couch. You move closer to Ooh, him. Please help this girl. This girl's delusional. Miss Butterfield, <laughs> pull up. Okay? I'm All a right. man. I got eyes. I'm gonna look. But as long as I don't touch you, you ain't got nothing to worry about, you On what? So you admit you were looking? I mean, I got eyes. I'm a man. What do you expect? I'm a man going to look. Do you look like what you see? Look. I like what I see, but I, like I said, I have boundaries. I, a man could have looks. He can like what he see, but he also have boundaries. Now, if you overstep those boundaries, that's when you have a problem, baby. No. Sometimes you got a problem just looking. What? Mr. Well, Keller, I think yeah. we got it. I mean, here's what we're looking at. I mean, we have this family friend who was living in the house. And Miss Butterfield thinks that Mr. Wims is is got something for her, some kind of attraction for her. And she believes that one because her panties were found in his laundry. There were condoms found in the truck, and they don't use condoms. And there was one missing. Yeah. And all this has caused Miss Butterfield to believe that Mr. Williams has been cheating, and she's concerned that he's been cheating with Miss Hunt. Yes. Well, this court has done a complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is he cheating? (laughs) Ron, would you escort him? Might be cheating on you, but not with me, baby. Guy Wolf. Step right over here, sir. Not with me. We're about to find out today, yeah? Yeah, we really is. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, you all came here to get answers. We're about to get answers. Let's hear what our expert has to say. How are you, Mr. Wolf? I'm wonderful, Your Honor. How about you? Good. It's good to see you. You as well. Would you share your credentials for the court record and then explain how forensic voice analysis works? Yes, ma'am. I've been in law enforcement for more than 20 years, and I've been a certified voice, forensic voice analyst for more than 12 and have conducted more than 900 exams. Forensic voice analysis works by analyzing the spoken word. When you speak, you have AM and FM frequencies on your voice, like on a radio. And when you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. We can then look at that algorithm and determine where somebody's being deceptive. There it is. All right, let's take a look at the first question Mr. Williams was asked. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with Kennedy? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. All right. Okay. Told you. Told you. I don't do stuff in my own home. Sorry. Ms. Butterfield, you just found out that he did not have sexual intercourse with Ms. Hunt. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel a little bit better, but that's just one question. So you're still not convinced? No. Well, let's take a look at the next question. Since being married to Pepper, did you use the condom she found in your truck to have sexual intercourse with another woman? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. What? 
Nah, man, uh-uh. Because for one, I don't even know what brand that is. And number two, if it was any, if it was any brand, it should have been Magnum, because I'm a big size, you heard me? So I don't know. So if it was a brand you recognize, then that means you use it with another woman? No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if there's Obviously. Who, 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 uh, that man knows his well. job. Okay, Mr. Williams, now's the time to try to make this right. You're gonna only get this one moment. I'm gonna give you three seconds. You might as well just tell now. It's all one, now. two, three, go. Okay, I did use one of them. At the time, it was an employee at my job, and it was pretty much like four four months ago. And where did you have sex with this woman? In the truck. Come on, I'm back I'm in right. my van, but I can say it was on a one-time thing. It wasn't nothing that was gonna occur time and time and time again. And I always, you know, if you're going to cheat, you know, okay, it ain't what how you, it ain't what do you mean you cheat? It's how you it, cheat. It ain't, it's, it ain't it's it's what, the, what? You shouldn't be cheating at all. <laughs> you shouldn't be cheating at all. You had the unmitigated gall to suggest, well, it was just one time. It was just, I mean, you know, I could, you get one freebie. You know, you don't. You don't get a freebie. Well, you know where you're right now. So you can you can do this, but all I'm hearing is la 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 la, because that's what it sounds like. You, Miss Butterfield, you got a family to raise, you gotta take care of you, and you need to get about that business. <laughs>